Franklin Chang Diaz is a physicist, an astronaut, and a dreamer. This is the lab, and this is the vacuum chamber. That's pretty impressive. Here in his Houston, Texas lab, Chang Diaz and his team are developing a rocket they believe will someday propel humans to Mars. We got this big door. It's uh, very nicely balanced, seven tons. Se this is seven tons? Seven tons of uh, non-magnetic stainless steel. Very expensive, and, but it allows us to bring in the, the rocket, put it in this cavity right here. Building rockets is the latest chapter in what seems a preordained evolution, part of his destiny, just like flying in space. Five, main engine ignition, all three engines up and burning. Two, one, and liftoff of the space shuttle Atlantis. When I was little, with my friends and my cousin, we used to play astronauts in a cardboard box. And we would be sitting or laying on, our, on chairs that would be laying on their backs. And we would be going through a countdown, and we would actually lift off and go into some other planet and explore a distant planet. And when I was sitting on the, on the shuttle, I always thought that I had been there before. And Chang Diaz sat in the space shuttle plenty. During his 25 years at the U.S. Space Agency, NASA, no astronaut flew more. Seven times, though. You know, at some point you say that's enough. You probably it's didn't never, say that. It's, it's never, never enough, it's right? It's never enough. <laughs> it's never enough, and, but, but I, you know, definitely my, my, my cup runneth over. I never imagined that I was going to fly as much. It is like a drug. You do become addicted to it, and, and I, I long to be in space, even today. Flying in space may have been Franklin's destiny, but the road to fulfillment was certainly not smooth. He was born in Costa Rica and spent part of his youth in Venezuela. I, I actually lived there from age two until about age uh, five or so. Chang Diaz says he always knew he wanted a career in space, but getting there for a boy from Costa Rica was the challenge. But a challenge his maternal grandfather told him prophetically that he would overcome. He said, you know, Franklin, someday you will go to the United States and become famous. At the age of 17, after graduating high school and with $50 in his pocket and not knowing a word of English, Franklin went to live with relatives in Connecticut. He attended the university there and received his doctorate in plasma physics at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. About the time the Apollo moon program was ending and rocket scientists were losing their jobs. I remember one of my college professors told me, don't even think about going into the space program because you will never get a job. I mean, look, look, look around you, look at what's going on at NASA. And I'm glad I didn't pay attention to that. In 1980, Franklin Chang Diaz became a NASA astronaut. Do you think that your accomplishments help? I mean, and there have been other Hispanic astronauts, but do you think that's motivating for young kids in Latin America in particular? You know, seeing what you accomplished, that, yeah, I can do that too. I think so. And I feel that uh, that's a responsibility that I need to, I need to be, um, uh, you know, tuned too, and uh, it is an important responsibility because uh, certainly a lot of people helped me. During his quarter century at the U.S. Space Agency, Chang Diaz continued working on his dream of building a futuristic rocket. When he left NASA, he formed the Ad Astra Rocket Company, which means to the stars. People always talk about this destination thing. I always say our destination is the stars, and all the others are just simple waypoints. In the vacuum chamber in his Houston lab, they have repeatedly tested prototypes of Franklin's rocket. It works basically by converting argon gas to super hot plasma that eventually shoots out a stream of ions and electrons that produce thrust, ultimately going much faster than current rockets can move you. A trip to Mars? Six weeks rather than six months. If you don't get it, don't worry. It is, as they say, rocket science. Within three years, Franklin's rocket should be ready for a test in space. 
Mark Carter is senior vice president for technology development. Space, that's the only place that really matters because that's where it's intended to ultimately work. But you have to go through several tests. You don't want to go do a really expensive test until you've proven that your other lower cost tests will actually meet. It, it's just a business. The rocket would be affixed to the outside of the International Space Station and fired. For Franklin and his team, that will be the fulfillment of the dream. So the little piece of me is going to be on that rocket, and that's just the greatest feeling. <laughs> Franklin says China has expressed interest in a joint mission with the U.S. to test the system. He's been to China numerous times. He certainly has a comfort level. His paternal grandfather was Chinese. To this point, the rocket's development has all been funded by private investors in the United States and Costa Rica. Franklin has put nearly everything but the family home into the business. Now he needs $100 million to build and ready the rocket that will be tested in space. But a successful test would, Chang Diaz believes, throw open the door to use his rocket to move satellites, reboost space stations, clean up space junk. I mean, we're basically and developing a trucking business. The trucking business for space. The next step would be the gold ring, a trip to the red planet, Mars. You do believe that your rocket will power you know, astronauts to Mars someday in your life? Yes, yes. Is it going to be an international endeavor? This is an effort for the entire globe, entire human race. So it will be an international mission and hopefully countries like India, China, United States, um, Europe and all the major uh, industrial countries will be key players. There is never any hesitation in Franklin's voice. He believes humans must one day live on other worlds. Our third rock from the sun will simply run out of resources. His vision for humanity is grand. Move on from this earth before we ruin it. We don't want to damage this planet to the point that we can't live in it. We want to be able to out and expand before the planet is to contaminate it and so that the earth eventually we become becomes humanity's national park but we don't really live here this is where we came from but we live elsewhere I think then we will assure humans survive along his journey he has never forgotten his roots as he said during his induction two years ago into the U.S. Astronaut Hall of Fame. I'm a product of two cultures. The same determination that drove him to become an astronaut drives him now.